Hi, I'm Spencer Christian. On this episode of Tracks Ahead, we'll visit a huge high rail layout in our nation's capital. We'll talk with John Bromley, a railroader and artist, and we'll check out the 15-inch gauge trains at the Whiskey River Railroad. But first, one of the last major railroads ever built was the Trans-Australian Railroad. Let's take a trip across a continent on the Indian Pacific. A ride on the Indian Pacific is one of the train trips of a lifetime. Don't necessarily need to be a train buff to travel on the train. It's not about traveling on a train today. It is all about it being an experience, a holiday. Basically, it's almost like a hotel on wheels. And even though you spend three or four days on it, it's not wasted time. It cuts through some of the most rugged country the world let alone Australia, has to offer. But your trip begins in the stylish, booming, sophisticated city of Sydney. Sydney is one of the most instantly recognizable cities in the world. The harbor is a playground for all variations of water sports. Of course, the crown jewel of the view is the Sydney Opera House, a music-filled icon of the country. It's a city that manages a balance of modern and classic with a point of departure like this old train station. It looks, frankly, the way a train station should look. This cavernous beauty is the spot where you step aboard the sleek Indian Pacific. After pulling swiftly from the station, it doesn't take long to notice a sharp change from metropolitan scenery to the lush countryside of the Blue Mountains. The whole journey from Sydney to Perth takes three days from coast to coast along these legendary rails. Perth nestles the coastline of the Indian Ocean. It's a city many Australians from the East Coast have never seen because it's so far away. It's a very clean city, very friendly city. The people, yeah, you can walk around uh, Perth and uh, there's no problems with getting lost because if you just stop and ask anybody, they, they're very friendly. My personal opinion is one of the best climates. Uh, it's very mild winters, uh, the summers aren't scorching hot, and they have something that's called the uh, Fremantle Doctor, which is a breeze that comes off the ocean in the afternoon, cools the city down. The breeze is also a favorite for windsurfers who catch some blistering rides on a rollicking Indian Ocean. In between these two great cities runs the Indian Pacific. Well, the Indian Pacific is, it's an icon. It's, uh, to start with, it's one of the, amongst the longest journeys, uh, rail journeys uh, within the world. Um, it's unique, and we could say that there's not many trains like this left, in, not just within Australia, but in the world as well. Along the way, there's the chance to stop and check out some of the far-flung towns of this vast country. Broken Hill is a mining town that's clinging to a more profitable past. It's the uh, doorway to the outback as well because Broken Hill is only a day's drive or day's travelling from major centres like Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide. There, as I said earlier, it is a mining town but uh, more so these days it's turning towards tourism. Um, there have been um, many movies made in the area too. Um, some of them like Mad Max and um, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert so forth, I think they're well known. It's one of the dots on the map served by the Flying Doctor Service, established in 1928. In a land where 911 is unknown and an ambulance is out of the question, these small planes show up with doctor aboard wherever and whenever medical help is needed, and it's free. The outback relies on the service, a lot. 20,000 emergency landings a year and uh, somewhere around 170 to 200,000 patients a year as well that they service. You can travel the globe and never find a longer stretch of straight track than right here. We're in the, uh, probably in the central of the Nullarbor at the moment. Uh, we're on the longest straight in the world. The straight being 479 kilometers long. Um, as you can see, there's not a lot to see out here. A few odd kangaroos, a bit of wildlife, that's about it. The word Nullarbor means without trees. And in fact, it might just as well mean without anything. But then again, this, all of this, is far from being nothing. This nothing is exactly what people come from all continents to see. 
There are many expressions that come on people's faces. Some of a great surprise, like especially for international visitors, particularly Americans and obviously um, our Japanese travellers. They are amazed at there are no buildings on any of this land in the middle of Australia. It's just dirt and trees, salt bush, um, that type of thing. And, and it just goes on forever. In the middle of it all is Cook, a truly tiny town. In past times, there used to be up to 200 people lived at Cook. Now there's only a caretaker, his wife and two children. So the official population is four. Well, somebody suggested it would make a great retirement place. It would have a lot of peace and quiet, no stress but uh, shopping would be a bit difficult. As wonderful as all the places out the window are, it's what's happening inside that makes this trip special. It's a very pleasant way to get from one side of Australia to the other, and I think that, as I said, the best part of it is meeting different people and, uh, you know, enjoying a good old chat with them. That's the best part of it, I think. The people that travel on it and the people that work on it make it special. Um, the people that you meet on the train make it special. As a train, as a train, it's, it's like I said, it is unique, but I think the experience of uh, what you see here and people you meet on the journey makes it special. Very good. We've had a, we've had a ball. We've met some great people, some Americans and <laughs> some expatriate English people, and uh, we've had some good food, good wines, and good company, good scenery. It's been really good. Eating is a main focus of the trip. The food is excellent and creative. It's all fresh. Uh, all the food is prepared on board the train. We have qualified chefs in our restaurant. Uh, the raw product is brought onto the train and they prepare the meals from scratch. As you would have noticed last night yourself, we have an ex quite an extensive menu, an extensive wine list as well. So it is fine dining uh, in the middle of the outback, basically. All the meals are prepared in this small galley. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner overlap in this compact area where the action never really stops. We have uh, some signature dishes um, on the train, one of them being the kangaroo. Did you have an opportunity to try that? Um, many, many people tend to uh, sit back a little bit when they first read the menu. But uh, it's, it's something to experience to, for your taste buds, something different. And uh, many people do uh, try for the first time and tend to enjoy it. The wonderful food is just another element that makes this journey so memorable. It's the kind of expedition that has a way of getting under your skin. After a night asleep in your cabin, or perhaps your comfy coach seat, you settle into the trip. You roll with the rocking rhythm of the rails, and enjoy a grand style of travel. You forget that you have uh, just come on a train to travel. It's not about that anymore. It's about gaining experiences, something that you'll remember forever and probably pass on to your children or friends or so forth. And we have many travelers that come back many times and ask them why and they will just uh, say, well, have a look for yourself. A memory that will be everlasting so that um, they can pass on to their family and friends and let them know how good it is to travel on the Indian Pacific. I joined, originally I joined the job to stay 12 months, it's 21 years as I said now, and I ask myself sometimes, has it been that long? Time has really flown and why I'm still here is, to start with, I could be sitting in an office maybe looking at the Sydney Harbour in Sydney or the Swan River in Perth, but after a while, you know, the scenery is the same all the time. I think I've got the best window, office window here. The scenery changes all the time. The people we meet, and if people come and travel on the train, when they walk off the train and they say, Michael, thank you very much for that experience, that's why I keep coming back anyway, and that's why I'm still here.